Good evening. I just wanted to kind of give you guys a briefing about what happened um, yesterday and today. Um, generally, what the story is, is last night, about 8 o'clock, we got a call from 911 uh, dispatcher that there was a possible drowning out here at the San Luis Pass. Um, and what we pieced together when we were on site, along with our partners, um, with the fire department, with EMS, the police, Jamaica Beach Fire and Rescue, um, is that there was a group of young men out here fishing. Didn't look like they're doing anything more than fishing. They were just north of the bridge uh, in the San Luis Pass area. Area is known for very strong currents, and uh, there is, you know, we put a lot of safety information out about that. Um, but being dark, uh, I don't know if they saw the signs and that kind of stuff. So they were wade fishing, didn't have any problem, had been out here for a while. Um, all but one of them went into the beach and were doing something on shore. I don't know, checking in their car or something like that. Um, and when they turned around, the young man, the 17-year-old, um, the 17-year-old Latino male that we were missing um, was gone, and they didn't know why. Um, they were all standing in about, they said, waist to chest deep water when it happened, and he was in shallow water like that, standing up um, the last time they saw him. We don't know if it was the currents, which are really strong out here, if there was a hole, or maybe there was some kind of medical thing that happened, um, and we're not sure about that. Um, we searched throughout the night with our partners. We had the... Uh, um, um, the Coast Guard was out. We had uh, Gulf Coast Search and Rescue came out with the Coast Guard. Um, I contacted our friends uh, at, the, at the Community Emergency Response Team with the county. Uh, they had the, the local county one and Precinct 1 in Houston were down here. They spent quite a long time searching uh, throughout the day today, starting in the midday. Um, and just recently, a few, little, few minutes ago, the Coast Guard helicopter spotted a body. Um, from up in the air in shallow water. He was actually in a little inlet um, that's in the area. Um, and it looked like as the water was dropping, we have an outgoing tide right now, the body was more visible. And they saw him from the air, we couldn't see him from the ground. Um, we were able to move him into a boat with a group called Equisearch, who was out here also. It was liaising with the Coast Guard to be here. Um, moved him into the boat, put him on the shoreline. And then um, looking at the conditions, the sand was very thick, we couldn't get um, the ID division down here to check the body and all that kind of stuff. So we made a move to move him to a fire station uh, where the medical examiner will um, check him over and then the funeral home will pick him up and move him to the ME's office here in Galveston County. Um, the, the dangers of this area are, just like on both ends of the island, we have strong tidal flow. Uh, we recommend that you do not swim in these areas. It's also, we have city ordinance prohibiting that. Um, so the recommendation is that you use this as a um, as a, as, a, as a way to remind all you and yours that these areas are dangerous to swim in. If you want to fish, fish from the shoreline. Um, general safety information, if you're in or around the water, if you're um, a non-swimmer or, or with children, make sure they wear a properly fitted life jacket. Um, and also avoid any structures on the beachfront to stay away from the rip current hazard that we have there. This was, um, if it was current related, it was a tidal current, not a rip current that, that caused it. Um, but again, we're not sure um, the exact cause at this time. We are very happy to have resolution, at least for the family. You know, we've been, my staff has been very concerned, as have all the groups that have been working this together. Um, and I would thank all of them for all their efforts through this um, and send our heartfelt condolences out to the family as they move from the process. But at least we can move um, to the next phase for them. Um, I just met with the family and, and briefed them. And then sharing the same information with you, I shared with them. Um, and so at that point, if you, if you have questions or comments or anything, I'm happy to field them. Can you tell us where he was initially reported missing and where is that in reference to where he was found? Very good question. Yes, sir. Um, so he was, the report that we had, he's about 100 yards north of the San Luis Pass Bridge on the Galveston side. And so if you look at the bridge, it goes over to Brazoria County. The base of that, if you look to the right just a little bit, 100 yards, that was where he and his friends and family were fishing. Um, and that's where um, the last seen point that he was. No one saw him actually go down, but that's where we're assuming he went down. Um, if you look out there, there's actually um, a sandbar. So there's the waterfront, and then there's a, a little bit of water, and then there's another sandbar. And he actually um, worked his way into that little inlet where that sandbar is. And so probably my guess is that he was you know, neutrally buoyant, and he went with the incoming tide out, and then with the outgoing tide, and kind of worked his way up into that little inlet. I mean, that's where the Coast Guard spotted him. It's probably not more than 300 yards from the last scene point. It's really close. 
Um, and this area is very tricky. There's tons of currents and the sandbars change all the time. So um, this is a good thing because this could have been days while we were looking just because the area is so tricky with all the currents and winds and changing conditions. Was the family able to, uh, con can you confirm his name? Um, he's a minor, so we, we can't release the name, but they, they, they did confirm his name and we did get a good description and he matches that description. Um, so we're, we're as sure as we can be without the medical examiner uh, making that determination that this is the same young man that we're missing from last night. Um, it, it, like I said, the area where we, he was found was about 300 yards away and we're not missing anybody else um, in the area. Mm -hmm. You talked just about just delivering that news. Obviously, it's the worst job there is to have to deliver that news to a family. Can you talk to us about that process and how they took the news? Sure, happy to. Um, you know, there's not much worse in this kind of work than telling a family they lost their son. I, I, I can't imagine that um, there's anything worse than that, really, other than receiving that news. Um, um, so that's not easy, and, and we do take a lot of pride, um, not just the Beach Patrol, but all the first responders here on the island, um, helping the over 7 million tourists that come here a year get home safely. And so this is not something that we um, take lightly, um, and we do have a history of you know, very low drowning rate here in Galveston, particularly in recreational areas. The hard part is if you're at these kind of weird parts of the island um, after hours, there's not a set of eyes out there. So just these safety reminders about, you know, making sure you wear a life jacket and then use good common sense are really important for people to remember because there's not always going to be that extra layer of protection that a lifeguard service or police or EMS or fire is going to provide for you. Probably got what they need.